paddles is very important for us to be able to communicate with one another when we're out in the water. But it's also important for us to be able to communicate with other vessels and even the Coast Guard, the authorities, if there's ever a case of an emergency. So one of the easiest ways to do that is with a VHF radio. What it is is essentially a two-way radio that uses frequencies that are already predefined for marine use. So that means every boat out there should have one. Uh, the Coast Guard will have it and will always be monitoring certain channels. And then for your group, if you all have one, it's very easy to communicate if you ever get separated or even if you're launching from different locations and you can talk to each other. And I'm also going to show two short clips of an incident management class where not only did we get to run through a couple of simulations, but we also got to do those with a U.S. Coast Guard helicopter and a U.S. Coast Guard small boat. So first, there's tons of different channels. The most important to remember is 16, Sweet 16. That's the one that the Coast Guard and all other ships should be monitoring at all times. And then once you've made contact, you'll probably be told to move to a different channel so you can carry out a conversation. Now there's dedicated leisure channels and those are the ones that are safe for us to use. They change from place to place, so just check locally what is available to you. For my area, usually we use channel 68 or 69. Another important thing to remember is that unlike a phone, it's not able to transmit and listen at the same time. And that's why there's a very specific protocol to follow when you're using it. Especially if it's during a distress call, you don't want anything to be missed. Let's do a quick overview on protocol. Brian Hansel has a great article on paddling light. I'm going to put a link to it below where he lists step by step what you should be saying and I'm going to take you through a quick call as if I'm talking to one of my friends and letting them know that I'm launching somewhere close by. One thing to remember is after you're done saying you use the word over so that they know that you're done transmitting and now you're listening. So it would go something like this. Kayak Felix, Kayak Felix, Kayak Felix, this is Kayak Luke, please come in, over. If I don't hear back, after a little while I would say the same thing. Kayak Felix, Kayak Felix, Kayak Felix, this is Kayak Luke, please come in, over. When Felix hears it, he would probably respond with, Kayak Luke, this is Kayak Felix, I hear you, over. So at that point I know Felix is listening, so I would try to give my message in a concise and clear manner. Kayak Felix, this is Kayak Luke. I'm now launching from Maranek Harbor. I will meet you at the southern tip of Glen Island in 15 minutes. Over. Kayak Luke, this is Kayak Felix. Roger, I'll meet you in 15 minutes. Out. So since we're on the Leisure Channel and it's a conversation between friends, we would probably drop the names in the beginning of every single transmission. However, the very beginning, you definitely should start with the three times of the person you're trying to reach and then once to identify yourself. And then at least once in the return saying that they're receiving you and who they are. However, if you're contacting the authorities, you need to be very precise and very clear about the protocol because they're very specific in how they talk. So let's quickly go through an emergency distress call. Remember this is only in a true emergency situation. So I would turn to channel 16 and I would say, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is Kayak Luke, this is Kayak Luke, this is Kayak Luke. We are one mile south of Glen Island. We have an unconscious paddler. We seek immediate assistance. There are 11 of us in our group. I am in, I am Kayak Luke and I'm in a black kayak. I'm Kayak Luke in a black kayak, over. I would then wait 10 seconds and I would repeat until I hear a response. So this is an example of the time where sharp navigation skills are essential if you're trying to say where you're located when you're on water. If you have a chart with you and you're able to tell them exactly where you are, then that means help will get to you much, much quicker. But in my message, one mile south of Glen Island, that might not be enough information. They will try to search for us. If I can say, for example, three landmarks that I can see from my location, they might be able to triangulate and get to us quicker. So having a chart, having a compass, all very helpful if you're trying to give your location to someone else. Then there's also the Pom Pom protocol. That's the same as the Mayday protocol, but it's used when it's not a life-threatening situation. So in Brian Hansel's article, he has a VHF radio cheat sheet which I really recommend you download and take a look at. It's a PDF. You can then print it and have it with you. For a class, Scott Brown had actually printed little laminated cards that we could keep with us at all times. For the helicopter simulation, we wrapped it up and made believe one of our one of our paddlers was unconscious. In turn, each one of us was able to relay information to the helicopter to guide it so that it could find us because it was much easier for us to hear the helicopter and see it than it was for them to find us, even though we were rafted. So here's that conversation. Coast Guard 6562, this is Kayak and Juan, come in. Roger, this is Coast Guard 6562. Coast Guard 6562, this is Kayak and Juan, and we're on your 7 o'clock, please turn left, over. Roger. Coast Guard 6562, this is Kayak and Juan, we're on your 12 o'clock, stop turn, thank you, over. Roger, stop turn. 
Coast Guard 6562. We should be inside soon. Over. Sorry, I forgot your name. Can you understand? Now for the second simulation, it was also an unconscious cradler, but for this one we got to use a dummy and it was a small boat that came to assist us. And you can also hear the conversation here. Exercise, exercise, exercise. This is Kayaker 1. Over. Kayaker 1, this is my boat. Go ahead, over. Here we have uh, an unconscious uh, Kayaker with us. There is 11 of us in our group. Over. This is the drill, this is the drill. Kayaker 1, this is my boat. Roger, what is... Location, over. We're a mile northwest of Fort Johnson. Over. Yeah, drill, the drill cut. One, Coast Coast Rogers. We're en route. ETA, two blanks. Over. Okay. This is the drill, the drill. Kayak one, Coast Coast Small Boat. We have you in sight off our port bow. Attempt to make our approach. However, we're standing by with all the families. Over. Roger. Over. So the one thing to know is in both of these conversations, I didn't repeat my name three times because we had already been in contact with them. If it was the first time that I was reaching out, I would have said, this is Kayak 1, Kayak 1, Kayak 1. It was actually extremely hard to try to be concise and to the point and quick when using the radio. But that's one of the things that you should really practice and see what that's like. So as far as radios, there's tons of them out there, lots of different companies. This one is an ICOM ICM24. It's one of the ones with the least amount of features. This one can float, it's waterproof, and also flashes when submerged. I always have it tethered to my PFD just in case. There's channels that repeat the area's weather on a continuous loop, so at any point you can turn it on put that on and then you'll hear it. Sadly, I'm in a basement right now, so I'm not catching anything. There's a lot more fancier ones. There's some with distress signals. There's some with GPS in them. Always make sure before you go out that it is charged. There's no point in having a radio that you're gonna use as a safety measure if it's not charged. So a couple of things to remember. One, it uses kind of line of sight. So that means that, for example, the Coast Guard will have very tall antennas to receive from all over the place, but for us sea kayakers, we'll be very, very low on the water. So that means it'll broadcast from our height as far as it can go before it hits an obstacle. So that's why it's a good idea to have other means of communications as well, such as a cell phone or even flares if you need to send out a distress signal. Another important point to make is that if you're transmitting on a certain channel, every other radio within your range that's tuned to that channel will hear your conversation. I know if you're talking to friends on a weekend, you're not gonna be as strict in your protocol, but keep it polite, keep it short, and know that other people can hear you. Once again, this was just an overview I highly recommend you go on YouTube, you search for VHF radio conversations, listen to real US Coast Guard conversations. It's very interesting to see really what the protocol is like. I was trying to go very quickly. If I missed anything, please leave comments below. And I know that the rules and regulations are not the same everywhere, but I know that the protocol and using Channel 16 is pretty much supposed to be worldwide. So please, if you have any specific information for your local area, please comment below so that others can see it as well. So I hope that was helpful. Please subscribe if you'd like. I'm always trying to put these videos out and it's always Luke Rover Kai Hipster. Thank you for watching. See you next time.